am retiring from work and I'm scared and anxious. You see, I've had a social security card since I was in eighth grade, working in my family's wholesale retail florist business. And now I'm leaving work behind and part of my identity. I really have no plans. I'm a little concerned about being lonely. And I know I want to be outside. So when I see that the community garden has plots available, I put in my application, pay my fee, and get my plot number. When I go to the garden to find my piece of land, the first thing I see is this beautiful garden. It's four times the size of the piece of land I have. And everything is in a row, and it's green, and there are no weeds. And I wonder, who raided this garden? And how did they manage this? And one Tuesday, when I see women working in this Eden, I introduce myself. One of the gardeners comes forward and says, I'm Sue, and I'm responsible for this part of the community garden where we grow food for Neighbors Helping Neighbors, the food pantry in South Hadley. And the next Tuesday, I show up with my bucket, my gloves, and join the women who are already at work. And I begin to learn that growing food for other people is different than growing food for myself. That if you grow food for people, you have to show up and harvest my relation to weather completely changes. Rain is only a little sprinkle. Humidity simply means I dress in layers and I make sure I have enough water to stay hydrated. And heat is my companion. I work with sweat pouring down my face, my t-shirt sticking to my body, and by the end of the evening, my jeans feel like they're made of cement because I am not used to the physical labor of growing food for others. I also learn about the rhythm of the garden and come to wait for the beans because the last thing we ever harvest are the bush beans. And we have a celebration song that goes like this. Jan says to the beans, please stop growing. And Leanne is always worried that we'll forget to harvest some of the beans. And so she manages to find five very mature green beans and asks, are these OK for the clients at the pantry? And Peg says, they can make soup. And Pat says, but do they know how? Will someone show them? Do they have a stove, pots and pans, and time? As I put my basket down in the harvest table, I listen to my fellow gardeners, women of a certain age, talk about being marginalized, trying to buy a car and no one paying attention to them on the showroom floor, service calls that aren't returned, and my own attempts to buy a dishwasher. But none of us are hungry. I redouble my efforts to stay visible and to keep my voice. I go to garden meetings. I go to work days. I go to the food pantry. I've been out to the food bank. And at the garden, I talk about how things are going and share my point of view. So they make me the president. <laughs> uh, And this makes me able to go around and ask gardeners, why are you using pesticides in an organic garden? Oh, I've done it all the time. Well, don't do it anymore, because you have to read the rules. <laughs> or when the man gets angry because a policy in the gardens change, and he comes shouting at me about what's happened, and I say, please don't shout. We can talk, and maybe there is a better way. And I've learned one last very important thing, that there are many ways to stay visible. And one of them is not to lose your voice, 
Another is to be respectful for each other because that's how a community grows. And the third thing, and the most important, is that you can show visibility like the women that I've come to know through the harvest baskets that make sure that our neighbors have access to organic fresh food. 